proudly we hail. Yes, proudly we hail, starring Ann Baxter in The Intuition of Diane, a United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. And now here is our producer, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, thank you, and greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your Theater of Stars, where Hollywood's foremost talent of stage and screen joins us in plays we know you'll enjoy. Our star is that capable and charming actress, Anne Baxter, and the title of our comedy romance, The Intuition of Diane. As Diane, Miss Baxter follows romance from Schenectady to Honolulu, prompted solely by her meddling intuition. We'll have the curtain for Act One of our comedy romance in just a moment. But first, here is our announcer with a message of importance. Young men, here is your opportunity for an interesting job with a great future. Your opportunity to qualify for aviation cadet training with the U.S. Air Force. If you are between the ages of 20 and 26 and one half, with at least two years of college or the ability to pass an equivalent examination, make an appointment now for an interview, sir, and the pilot in the U.S. Air Force. Get details today at the U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station. And now, once again, our producer. The curtain rises on Act One of The Intuition of Diane, starring Ann Baxter as Diane Morrow. <laughs> We're in the classroom conducted by Diane Morrow, a grammar school in Schenectady. It's a lazy, hot June afternoon, the day of days for teacher and pupil alike, the day summer vacation begins. Facing her expectant charges, lovely Diane Morrow looks rather like yesterday's cut flowers, slightly wilted by the heat. She gazes intently at her wristwatch as it clicks off the seconds not even noticing the approach through the open hallway door of kindly Mrs. Mead, principal of the school. A protracted wait, it seemed, but then... Goodbye, Josie! Goodbye! Oh, thank heaven it's over. You don't really mean that, do you, Diane? Oh, why, Mrs. Mead, I didn't see you come in. You seem quite preoccupied. <laughs> oh, that isn't quite the word for it. I'm positively done in. Well. Now, is it that bad? Oh, honestly, Mrs. Mead, I guess I hate teaching school. When it comes to this time of year, I'm, I'm like a fighter hanging on the ropes about to go down for the count. Just barely saved by the bell announcing summer vacation. <laughs> Taking a trip this summer, Diane? I don't think so. No? I've barely $100. Spent all my money. man bait, clothes. Well, that's a worthy expenditure. Took me a hard-earned fur coat to land me, Mr. Mead, many years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I had to camouflage my figure. Oh, you're a peach, Mrs. Mead. I'll miss you this summer, as well. Thanks. But it goes further than that this time, I'm afraid. Oh? Yes, I came down to tell you they're retiring me. This school will have a new principal next fall. Well, that makes coming back here even more unbearable. Oh, I'll drop around occasionally. Can't keep an old fire horse away from the fire, you know. Oh, but we were talking about men a moment ago. Fascinating subject. Yes, isn't it? What are you doing about a man? Well, I suppose what most every girl does. I... Well, what man wants a school teacher? My dear, there's nothing wrong with teaching school or school teachers. Mr. Mead will vouch for that. Oh, well, not only that, but it's, it's this place, connected in my existence here. Such a strangled existence, if even one at all. Diane, I think I know what's wrong with you. You do? Yes. You're building up a wall. You're isolating yourself from every bit of happiness that might be yours. Am I? Definitely. Right? What do I do about it? Ted just refused to be such a sourpuss. I think that's what they call it. Yes, but it isn't easy to suddenly blossom out with joy and happiness. No, oh, but it is. You're a woman, aren't you? Every woman has intuition. Employ it. Use it in your problem. Once recognized, a woman's intuition will never... Now, don't forget it. <laughs> My dear, here's wishing you a lovely... Thanks, Mrs. Mead. I have a sudden... Well, now you're talking. Yes, but seriously, here's wishing you all you deserve on your permanent vacation. Interesting, what Mrs. Mead said about a woman's intuition. Oh, fine old lady, Mrs. Mead. She put such importance on intuition. It's silly, though. 
Oh, is it? Who's that? Don't stop on the sidewalk and talk to yourself. You'll cause a traffic jam. That's it. You don't want people to think you're crazy, do you? Now, who are you? I can't see anyone. Naturally. Nobody can see me. And you're the only one who can hear me. But why am I so honored? Because I'm your intuition. Your intuitive sense of right. Then Mrs. Mead was correct in what she said. But how can you help me? How do you like that? Already starting to doubt me. And I haven't even lifted a finger to help you. Oh, I didn't mean anything wrong. I... Just don't carry it too far. Or I'll leave you in the mess you've been living in for the past five years. It has been a mess. You're not kidding. Well, I'm glad you're finally going to depend on me to get you your man. Even though it took Mrs. Mead to prod you. You do want a man, don't you? Well, I... Oh, stop I... being such a schoolgirl. And let's get this thing underway. You're taking a cruise to Honolulu. Honolulu? That's right. Oh, it's impossible. I only have $100. Impossible. How you human beings bore me. Yeah, but with only $100, I... Get down to the travel bureau, will you? I'm sorry, Miss Morrow. We have nothing in the way of accommodations to Honolulu for a hundred dollars. Oh, nothing? Absolutely nothing. Unless you'd like to crawl into a burlap sack and be some potatoes. <laughs> Free that way. <laughs> well, I, I knew I was just imagining things. What's that? Oh, nothing. Thank you. Not at all. You give up easily, don't you? You, you come back. I've got a job to do, remember? Now you get back to that clerk. Oh, don't be silly. You heard what he said. Being obstinate, aren't you? I'm merely being realistic. Well, my stubborn one, I'll have you call back. Oh, Miss Morrow. Yes? You see? There is one other possibility. Oh, there is? Yes, there is. Are you by any chance uh, a school teacher? Well, yes, I, I am. But how did you know? Well, you uh, look like a school teacher. Oh, I do? Uh, that is to say, so many school teachers take cruises during the summertime. Uh, yes. Uh, well, if you'd care to, you might tutor a child for your passage. I have an inquiry here. Frederick Teller, 1919 Glenview Drive. Better grab it, Toots. Please don't call me Toots. Oh, but I didn't. Oh, not you. Uh, I'm very interested in tutoring. Uh, uh, let me get that address. It's 1919 Glenview Drive. Yeah. Oh, yes, this looks like the place. Don't bore me with all the details. Just press the doorbell. And another thing. I noticed when you talk to that clerk at the Travel Bureau, you seem ashamed of being a school teacher. That will get you into trouble. You know everything, don't you? But, Miss Smith. Mrs. Teller, I wouldn't tutor Freddie again for $10,000. No, sir. Goodbye. Uh, oh, uh, you're Mr. Teller? Uh, yes. Uh, you're the school teacher, aren't you? Yes. Tutor. <laughs> Going to take my boy to Honolulu. I've been hoping and praying. Well, I rather thought that is... Uh, pay uh, all your expenses. Two weeks. Best accommodations all the way. A deal? Uh, well, uh, take it, Diane. Take it. All right, Mr. Teller. A uh, shake on it. <laughs> now you'll have your hands full with Freddy. Keep him away from mechanical things. Goes wild. All right. And I want him back here in exactly two weeks. Talk to summer camp into taking him for a month, thank heaven. We've got to have him here to start on time. Very well, Mr. Teller. All right, since it's a deal, let you meet my son, Freddy. Oh! Oh, uh, oh that's Freddy. Must have dug up the chemical set I hid from him. Child can do more damage in ten minutes than a tornado. Heaven help you on your trip. It's still a deal. Well, Freddy, there's San Francisco behind us. Yes, ma'am. And I must say you've been a perfect gentleman so far. Oh, thank you, ma'am. But then I enjoy being gentlemanly for you, Miss Morrow. You do, Freddy? Oh, yes. I expected some old maid battle axe school teacher. <laughs> Not someone so... <whistles> well, I mean, so utterly attractive. Oh, well, thank you, Freddy. You're sweet. May I escort you to a deck chair? No, I think I'll just stand here at the rail. Whatever you wish. Uh... Do you mind if uh, I stroll around a bit? No, no, that'll be all right, Freddy. See you later. Well, how are we doing? Oh, just marvelous. The ship, the sea. Well, things are going to start getting more intense momentarily. I've got him coming this way. Who? Not him. Your dreamboat. The man I'm going to deliver. 
Remember? Oh, but, oh, not the bald-headed one. Oh, honey, not that high headlight. The one behind him. The tall one coming this way. Oh, he wouldn't look twice at the school teacher. That's what you think. What's, uh, what's his name? David Powers, I think. I'm not much for names. Oh, dear, not David Powers. A family of bankers? Oh, I've seen his name in the paper. Oh, dear. Steady as you go. Here he is. Hello. Hello. Mind if I join you here? No, not at all. I guess aboard ship this is proper. I mean, my barging up like this. Oh, I'm sure it is. I mean, why not? I must admit I've been watching you for some several minutes. I was impelled to come over. I'm glad you did. The name's Powers, David Powers. How do you do? I'm Diane Morrow. Diane. Uh, The little boy, yours? No, no, not exactly. Uh, That is, uh... My little brother. Oh, good. You're not one of those school teachers aboard, are you? Why? <laughs> the joint's loaded with them. No, no, you couldn't be a school teacher. You're much too... too... <laughs> I, I can't seem to find the word. So it's Diane, is it? Yes. I mean, that's from Diana, you know, Roman goddess of mythology. Her festival was on the Ides of August, the full moon of the hot season. She was worshipped with torches. Oh, really? How interesting. Mm, Seems that quite a lot of them carried the torch for Diana. Maybe they still do. (laughs) Who knows? You're doing great, Diane. I must say this to you, Diane Morrow. Standing here on deck with the night coming on, you did look rather like a goddess, even without the help of the moon, you did. He isn't so bad himself. Shh! What did you say? Oh, nothing, nothing at all. Tell me, have you sailed to Honolulu before? No. Well, then, I can be of assistance to you. That is, if you'll allow me to be of assistance to you. I'd give most anything if you'd allow me to show you the island. All right. And your little brother, too. That is, when he isn't seeing cowboy movies. (laughs) Fortunately, they have plenty of cowboy movies on the island. And if they don't, I'll say they get plenty. All right, that's fair enough. You know, really, Diane, I can't begin to tell you how much it's meant to me... What's going on? There seems to be a commotion on the bridge. What's going on up there? Some little kid grabbed the wheel. Had us headed back to San Francisco. Oh, dear. Then he pulled the fire alarm. Oh, dear. Now we go to the light bulb blower. Ready? Ready? from our story, The Intuition of Diane, starring Anne Baxter, to bring you an important message from your government. Ladies and gentlemen, our Army and our Air Force are critically short of physicians and dentists. Over 2,000 volunteers from these two professions are urgently needed today to safeguard and care for the health of the men and women who, as members of the United States Army and United States Air Force, are serving you and me at home and overseas. Young physicians and dentists particularly those who did not serve in the armed services during World War II, have been asked by their government to act now to volunteer for duty at once. If you are one of these young physicians or dentists, please write or wire either the Surgeon General of the United States Army or the Air Surgeon of the United States Air Force at once and volunteer your services. If you know one of these young physicians or dentists, please call his attention to this urgent message. Thank you.